Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. My name is Greg Deckler and I have a confession to make. So the last two videos, the one on spam and the other one on auto time intelligence, really have kind of demonstrated kind of my uh, my guilty little pleasures in life, if you will. Things that, uh, just small things that provide me an enormous amount of, of self-satisfaction. So one being I love screwing with spammers, right? And scammers, um, you know, deleting their messages, you know, I, and I've even gone to great lengths, you know, I'll get these random text messages and I'll carry a conversation on with these people, you know, for days, if not weeks, right? And then eventually it'll turn to like, oh, Bitcoin. And then what I'll do is I'll just start feeding their own script right back in their face, right? Because I've dealt with so many of these, this kind of nonsense, you know, and so, <laughs> and so just waste their time. Right, so I love doing that sort of stuff. Um, the other thing I love doing, you know, I guess you could say define convention, right? I love screwing with absolutists, right? People that come to me and they'll be like, you must absolutely do things this way. You must never, absolutely never do things this way. The first thing that comes to me when, when I, you know, people come to me with that is I just start, you know, finding holes to poke in their argument, right? And it's like, well, what about this case? I mean, what about this exception? What about this? And what about that? You know, and just until the, it's like, well, it's an absolute with like 17,000 exceptions. So why even have it, <laughs> right? So I love that. It's the same way with like somebody draws like a line in front of me and says, do not cross this line. You know, I may be like, well, what if, what if I breathe across the line? Does that count? You know, what if I have my pinky toe? across that line, you know, does that count? What if I hold my entire foot above the line, but I don't actually step on the ground? Does that count? You know, so <laughs> I just, I'm broken that way. Uh, my parents tried to raise me right, but failed in that regard, I guess. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna totally eviscerate this nonsense around, you must never use DAX columns. DAX columns are evil. They will bloat your data model, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm just going to totally eviscerate this thing um, because I'm tired of it. Um, and I'm not going to name names and who's pushing this stuff, but just totally tired of it because uh, it's a nonsense argument. And yes, I understand it follows Roche's maximum, which is generally a good idea. And da 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 da. The problem is with the absolutism and the fact that it ignores like the vast majority of Power BI users who are just business users, man, right? And they don't want to know how to code stuff. And they don't want to know, they want to know as little about the technology as possible. They just want to use it to get a result, right? These kind of absolutist, you know, statements just totally ignore that group of people, which are the vast majority of people that use this tool. Like, please, IT folks, get it through your thick skulls, right? <laughs> right? Just because you're an IT nerd doesn't mean that the rest of the world is, okay? And I'm an IT nerd. All right, so anyway. So first of all, so I created a three PBX files, okay? And what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show a simple example. Um, so in this one, right, I have created group, a group. Let's say that, you know, I'll, I'll edit this group. And this is very easy for an end user to do, right? Right, so uh, accessories, I wanna be classified as bananas. If it's clothing or components, this is just adventure works. I want it to be grapefruit. And then pickle, if it's bikes, I want it to be classified as pickle. And then I've included my other category, which is supposed to contain all ungrouped values. We'll get to that in a bit. So easy to create, right? I can just drag and drop stuff, you know, click a few buttons and boom, I've got my stuff. And it even has the ability to do, you know, this is a group type of a list. They also have bins and things like that, which can be even more complex. But this is a simple example. Okay, well, what does this do actually do? Well, lo and behold, what it does, it creates a column, right? Creates a column in your data model, right? Which is suspiciously like a DAX calculated column would. Um, the one odd thing being is that like, if there's a blank in the product category name, then it shows up as a blank here, not other, which I find to be broken and above. But it is what it is, right? That's how it, this is how this works, right? And so, you know, now, you know, I can use this, this group, right, that I've created without zero, with zero code, right, I can use this, right? So that's one method, right? Now let's look at the uh, the DAX method. So let me see here, DAX column. So this is the exact, all of these three started as the exact same data model. I just imported the DIM product, you know, the DIM product uh, dimension, you know, expanded out subcategory name and, or subcategory and expand, then expanded out DIM category, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, easy stuff. Um, so this is how you would create that in DAX, right? 
I can use a switch statement on my English product name, accessories, banana, bikes, pickle, clothing, grapefruit, grapefruit, components, grapefruit, other, right, boom. And I get the exact same column other than the fact that it actually returns other when it's supposed to and not blank, right? So DAX calculated column, I would say, is superior to like grouping, you know, grouping and binning in some respects, right? At least for this simple example. All right, now let's go and look at how you would have to do this in Power Query. So in Power Query, right, Power Query doesn't even have a switch statement. The M language doesn't. It's a big hole, I think, in that in that uh, language. But um, so you have to do it with like these nested if else statements, if then else, if then else, if then else, if then else, which is ugly. I mean, from an, from an IT nerd perspective, ugh, ugh, this is gross um, compared to a switch statement or a case statement, right? I'd rather maintain the switch statement rather than a bunch of nested if else statements. Let me also now compare this. You know, you know, try to convince you IT nerds out there, right? If I was to come to you and say, or if somebody was to come to me and say like, hey, we're developing this new application, we're gonna develop half of it in Java, and we're gonna develop the other half in C Sharp. What do you think? I'd be like, well, I can't say it's the stupidest idea I've ever heard, um, but it ranks up there. Um, and so you're gonna have to provide me a really good reason why you would develop half of your solution in one language and half of your solution in another. And there, Maybe perfectly valid reasons, but default is probably going to lead to higher maintenance costs, you know, more technical debt. Now I got to hire people that know both Java and C Sharp. You know, it's it's a you know it's a whole mess, right? I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that's a stupid, dumb idea to even start with that premise, right? Pick pick a language, man. Pick C Sharp. Pick Java. Both general purpose languages. Both can pretty much do exactly what the other can do. Go for it, right? Anyway, so I mean, that's so what you're telling me though is, you know, when you're saying, oh, never DAX cal calculated columns. So you're telling me that, okay, I'm already going to have DAX in my data model because I'm probably going to have DAX measures, right? Almost never going to get around having at least one measure in your data model, which means you're going to have DAX in your data model. And now I need one calc and I need one extra column, one extra column. And you're telling me, oh, no, don't use DAX for that. Lose an entire different language, right? Increase the complexity and technical debt of your solution exponentially for one freaking DAX column. Don't that you absolutely never should do, right? No, you have to write Power Query code. Or no, no, you have to go and write SQL code to do that. That's stupid. That's dumb. It's just as stupid as developing half an application in Java and the other half in C Sharp. It's the same stupidity. Okay. Now. Ah, oh, the coup de gras. Okay. Ah. Mm. Got to prepare for this, right? Love this. Um, so this is the coup de gras on DAX calculated columns versus Power Query. Okay, you ready for this? Right. The the mantra has always been, don't use DAX cal cal calculated columns because they don't compress as well as if you do it in Power Query, and you're gonna bloat your data model and blah 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 and blah blah blah. Right. That's the mantra, right? Except. Here's the original DIM product. It's 196 kilobytes. If I do DAX product groups, which is using binning and grouping, 197 added one kilobyte to my data model. DIM product DAX columns, one kilobyte to my data model. The Power Query, it added a whopping 15 kilobytes. 15 kilobytes. Do you see that? Do you see that versus one? 15. So DAX got columns. They are better. They are 15 times better than Power Query. That's how good DAX calculated columns are. That's all I had for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.